The time is 5 o'clock on your Tuesday morning, and this is WKYT This Morning. A wife is mourning the loss of her husband this morning after he drowned while swimming with a friend in a southern Kentucky lake. Faye County schools may be switching up the way they make up for snow days, but the new option has some parents concerned. We'll hear their thoughts on the change ahead. And as we wait for summertime, Lexington is gearing up for one of the major summer holidays. You'll find out some changes that are going to have to be in store for the 4th of July celebrations. That story and more coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good Tuesday morning to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Bill Bryant. And it's so good to have you on WKYT here on May 24th. We are rolling toward June and July and those summer this months. Year's you know, just flown by. It hasn't really it? has. It's going to feel a little bit like summer today. Let's just a preview as we have the yes, warmer I'm temperatures. Looking forward to these warmer temperatures, right, Micah? Yeah, you're going to get them today. We're right there in the lower 80s later on this afternoon. So here comes that warm air we've been talking about for about a week now. Life Sky Camera, good look outside early this morning. Maybe a little fog some in some of those valley regions and around some of the lakes. Speaking of lakes, we're in the 50s now, but look toward the afternoon. We're holding on to 82 degrees. This is good lake weather as we travel off through your work week. It gets even warmer than that. I'm going to show you how high we go if we actually see a 90 degree in our forecast and when the rain arrives. I'll have all that coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, and we'll see you then. Thank you. It was a tragic night at the Southern Kentucky Lake. Investigators tell us a man drowned while swimming with a friend. It happened not far from the spillway at Laurel Lake in Whitley County. Investigators say they found the man's body in the water late last night. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our Live desk with more on the investigation now. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. This search for the missing swimmer ended very quickly last night because crews were able to find his body with a remotely operated underwater vehicle. The man who drowned was 21 years old. He was swimming with a friend around 8 last night when he went under. They were crossing a cove near Laurel Lake's spillway when he slipped beneath the surface. His friend tried to save him, but it was just too late. The man who died was from out of town, and he was visiting the lake with his wife and young child. The coroner has not released his name yet. The agonizing search for his body did not last long because search crews had some extra help from a dive team who was searching for another missing man. Just so happens the people from Louisiana with the ROV were here, and uh, we went out on their boat and was able to locate and bring him up in uh, approximately 28 feet of water. The emergency management director says searches like this one do not usually end quite so quickly. He says the Louisiana dive team was in the right place at the right time to help bring the man's body in. So why was this crew from more than 650 miles away searching Laurel Lake? We'll take a look at their mission to find a man who has been missing for nearly four years coming up at 530. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. A Moorhead State University police officer was badly injured when police say his motorcycle crashed in Rowan County. It happened on University Boulevard in Moorhead yesterday morning. Moorhead State leaders say 35-year-old MSU Sergeant Anthony Dalton had just finished his shift and was heading home. They say Sergeant Dalton lost control, hit an embankment, and was thrown off of the motorcycle. Police say he was wearing a helmet but has suffered serious head injuries. He was airlifted to UK hospital and at last check, he is listed in critical condition. Six people have been charged in what police are calling a plot to smuggle drugs into the Wayne County Jail. All six have been charged with drug trafficking and engaging in organized crime. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office says after hearing about the plot, they worked with the jail to go undercover. They say investigators saw drugs were being dropped off to a Wayne County work release inmate at the Wayne County Senior Citizens Building. Deputies say they stopped the inmate before he could smuggle the drugs into the jail. We have an update to pass along to you this morning on the survivors of a crash that killed four members of a Lexington family. Police say Israel Avalar and his sons, Kevin, Daniel, and Matthew, died in the crash Saturday in Texas. His wife, Hilda, his daughter, Kimberly, and another family member survived. Another daughter, 21 year old Bibian Avalar, was not with her family at the time of the crash. She's in Texas now and was able to see her mother for the first time since that crash. She recognized me and uh, knew that I was there, and uh, she's just in a lot of pain, I think, right now, and, you know, a lot of medications, but she, they had her on, and she's trying to take everything in, I think. 
Vivian also said Kimberly is doing better and they plan to take her off a ventilator soon. Family members say friends at their church in Lexington are helping them get through this difficult time. Israel Avalar started Temple Baptist Church a couple of years ago, but the family attended Clay's Mill Road Baptist for years. Time this morning is 5.05 on WKYT. Toyota is recalling more than one million vehicles to replace front passenger airbag inflators made by Takata. Toyota says those inflators could be faulty. The recall includes Toyota Scions as well as Lexus models from 2006 through 2011 model years. If your car is affected, you'll receive a letter in the mail. Investigators say Takata airbags can deploy with too much force and spew shrapnel. They have been blamed on 11 deaths. 17 automakers, including Toyota, have recalled more than 35 million cars because of the airbags. So we're getting closer to summer, and that means students across Kentucky are almost finished with school. But if they have to make up a snow day, it could be a little longer before they get to enjoy the summer break. More than 40 of Kentucky's 173 school districts are already using non-traditional instruction days to avoid those makeup days for snow. That means when schools close because of the weather or an emergency, students can learn, can learn from home. Fay County may become the next district to use them. Some parents we talked to have some concerns about the change. I'm very strong in believing that they need to have structure, they need to have someone help them. And I've just seen too many situations where kids at home don't have anybody to help them and they just do it any way they want to, so they get it turned in. Fayette County School Board members say that they still want to explore this way of learning. Last night, they did approve a motion to apply for the Kentucky Department of Education's non traditional instruction program. The board said the program wouldn't start in Fayette County until the 2017 2018 school year at the earliest. We are not far away from the official start of summer, and the city of Lexington is already gearing up for some of the bigger summer holidays. But this year, you won't see the fireworks show at its usual location because the site has changed. WKYT's Mike Byers live this morning with more on this search. Good morning there, Mark. Our Mike. Good morning, Michelle. With 4th of July a little over a month away, the Downtown Lexington Corporation is up against the clock to find a new location to launch the city's fireworks celebration. For years, the fireworks show has been launched from property owned by the RJ Corman Company on Main Street, but the company doesn't want that site used for fireworks this year. Leaders of the Downtown Lexington Corporation tell us they're now looking for a new site, but they say it will be challenging to find one. The reason being, the show needs a 600-foot clearance zone. The city is currently looking into several possible locations. We're told one option would be to use a smaller site and reduce the size of the show. Either way, come 4th of July, we are told that there will be a fireworks show. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, they'll figure out something, right? Yes, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Pretty much have to. Our time this morning is 5.08 on WKYT, and it's good to have you with us. Yes, it is. We're all pretty attached to our cell phones, and so are our kids. We'll take a look at a new study about kids and technology ahead on WKYT this morning. And soft drink giant Coca-Cola is running out of sugar from one of its suppliers. I know how that is hurting the company. It's coming up after Micah's forecast. Boy, we get into the afternoon. It's going to look good again today, but uh, things are going to change with our temperatures. You're going to see those jump to the 80s. I'm going to show you how high we get into the 80s and also when the rain chances arrive. Coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. No problems early this morning if you're about to walk out the door. I will tell you this, yesterday morning was a bit on the cool side. This is slightly better early this morning. Good news is no rain's falling across the region. No widespread fog. Maybe some of those valley regions and around some lakes and rivers and streams. But other than that, it's a pretty nice start to the day. 50 degrees, a very popular number around the area. Boyle County coming in at 50 degrees, and that goes off into Gary County. Uh, Madison County coming in at 50. Laurel County. We'll work our way back toward Montgomery County. I mean, Frankfort there in Franklin County, you name it. And we're right around 50 degrees. Lexington coming in at 56. So dating back to Sunday and to yesterday, those were two consecutive days that we've had back-to-back -back, uh, dry days. And we haven't had that since late April. Let's add this day to the list. The last time we had three straight dry days, it's been a while. It has been a month since we've actually had that. That was April 23rd, 24th, and 25th. It's been a long time. Let's just put it that way. It seems like we get a day of dry weather, and then here comes the rainy conditions, 
It hasn't been that way the past couple of days, and it's not going to be that way today. 82 degrees later on this afternoon. It's perfect weather. Kids outside yesterday, I mean, all around my neighborhood, they're all in my front yard playing baseball, playing soccer, and that's just the way it's going to go today, too. I mean, a really good looking afternoon in store at 82. The moisture content isn't up just yet. That actually comes in the upcoming days, and that will give us the rain chances, too. So the summer feel slides in. Yes, the temperatures will read. Kind of seems like summer, but the feel today still isn't all that bad because you're talking about dew points, the moisture outside, the stickiness, the mugginess. It's not going to be there, not today. It's really the next few days. Rain chances will be on the increase too, but not very high. We're talking 30 to 40 percent. That's about it. So if you have any plans, if you're getting off towards your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you have those plans going on for the holiday weekend, stick to them. Know this, though, you could have a passing shower or thunderstorm. Can't rule that out. But for the most part, it's a really nice holiday weekend. I see no uh, bad news in the forecast towards your weekend and off towards your Monday, too. Let's talk about your seven day forecast and break it down for you. We're at 82 deg uh, degrees today with mostly sunny skies, few clouds, no rain chance. Then we hit Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yes, there's a lot of rain looking like that in the forecast, but always pay attention, and I mean always pay attention to the percentages. 30, 40 percent. That's not a great chance of rain. So, yes, the rain chances are in there. It's kind of like your summertime setup where the feels out there, that tropical, that muggy feel. But also, you get into the afternoon, you'll start to see some of those thunderstorms spark up. Uh, but it does look like most of us will stay dry. Most of us throughout your work week and off towards your weekend, your weekend is actually a lesser opportunity to see some rain. We're at 86 Saturday, 86 on Sunday. You can see 85 on Monday. I mean, those three days will be slam packed. It, I don't know if the pools are open yet, but when they do, they open this weekend. They open this week. Oh, it'll be packed out at the pools. Yep. I promise you there that. You Looks good. <laughs> Great lake weekend. Yeah. Yes, it does look good for that. All right, the time this morning coming up on 5:15, and Venezuela is running out of sugar. The country is going through political and humanitarian crises right now, and Venezuela's state-run sugar producers say they're closing up shop, at least for the time being. They say they're running out of raw sugar. The largest bottler of Coca-Cola has put up a red flag. They need that raw sugar to make the popular drink. Coca-Cola says its bottler in Venezuela will keep making the drink there until they run out of their sugar stockpile. Then they'll start looking for sugar in other places. According to the soft drink giant's website, 1.8 billion drinks are sold each day. All right, a lot of folks will keep an eye on that. And we are glad you're up and at it with us here on your Tuesday morning as we get this day off and rolling. And sunshine on the way. Hope your day is bright like the sunshine, right? Yeah, when we come back, we'll have a look at your money. New data on the state of retirement savings. It's not great news. And new images of the next generation of Volvos. They look quite different. I'm Brooke Silva Braga in New York. Those stories and more coming up in Money Watch. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. 519, bright and early on your Tuesday. We do mean bright today. With yes, we do. We do. We do. Yeah, it's going to be good. New data is out on the state of retirement savings, and it's not looking so good. And new images of the next generation of Volvos have come out. Brooks Elba Braga has the latest on your money. Americans at retirement age may not have the income they need. A report from Bankrate.com finds that at age 65 and over, income levels are just 60% of what they are for those aged 45 to 64. Financial planners say you should maintain at least 70% of your income to do well in retirement. Stocks started the week flat yesterday, the Dow shedding eight points, and the Nasdaq losing three. The average child gets their first phone at age 10, according to a digital trend study, and 38% of young users have internet on their phone. That's twice as many as four years ago. Volvo released images of a new SUV and sedan as part of the automaker's brand reinvention. There they are. They're both compact cars that will go into production next year and hit showrooms in 2018. And oddsmakers are increasingly confident that the UK will stay in the European Union. British bookmaker William Hill projects a greater than 80% chance voters will decide to remain in the EU next month. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silva Braga. 
Well, Facebook says it did not find evidence that its trending topics feature is politically biased. That's according to the results of an internal investigation that has now been released. Still, the social network says it will change how that feature works anyway. The Senate questioned Facebook on allegations of bias and its trending topics. The network said that it could not prove any allegations that politically motivated bias was in play, but it said it is possible that one of Facebook's contractors was biased in some isolated cases. Our time this morning, 521. Good to have you along on your Tuesday. There's so much more coming up as we keep you up to the minute on all the latest news. Yeah, sports is next. Hopefully you have not had your fill of UK versus Kansas college basketball because it's going to happen again next year, whether you like it or not. Also an update on the physical condition of Kentucky Derby champion Nyquist and UK baseball must win game today against Alabama in the SEC tournament. If the Cats want to go to the NCAA tournament, sports is on the way. Pretty nice start to the day as we're saying with mainly clear skies. There is a little fog in some of these valley regions, but other than that, I think we look pretty good to go. Now, heading out to the lake later on today, it'll be awesome. You're talking lower 80s. So, yeah, what you see right now, you jump that about 30 degrees like we did yesterday, and you'll be there in the lower 80s. 56 now in Lexington. We'll finish off right around 50 to about 52 degrees. It's not a bad feel outside, but there are some spots, Montgomery County and Mount Sterling. You go off into Camargo and Jeffersonville, those temperatures right around 48 at this moment. We'll finish off right around 45. Paris and Bourbon County, if you work your way down south into the uh, Laurel County area, East Bernstadt, London, and then work your way down into Corbin. Whitley County, Williamsburg, and Saxon, my friends down south, holding on to temperatures there in the mid to upper 40s. Then we go through the afternoon, 82 degrees. Yeah, here comes some heat in the forecast. The mugginess actually comes the next few days, along with some rain chances. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. It looks like another matchup between Kentucky and Kansas in this upcoming season's SEC Big 12 Challenge. The two met in Lawrence back in January in a memorable game which went to overtime. John Rothstein of CBS Sports says the Cats will host the Jayhawks in Rupp Arena this season. Kentucky Derby winner Nike was not traveling to New York yesterday because of a slightly elevated temperature. Nike was finished third in the Preakness over the weekend, first race he had ever lost, and his team is still hopeful of running in the Belmont Stakes June 11th. The temperature went down later in the day, but some blood work was done on Nyquist, so for now, he stays at Pimlico. The SEC baseball tournament begins later today. Kentucky is the eighth seed. They'll face the ninth seed at Alabama Crimson Tide. These two met in the regular season, with UK winning the series two games to one. In that three game set back in April, Two games were decided by one run, and the other decided on this walk-off grand slam by the Cats' Riley Mahan for UK and Alabama. This is perceived to be a must-win game for hopes of making the NCAA tournament. No, I would think that Mitch and I are looking at this thing the same way. You, you got to win this game, and you got to you got to get to the double elimination part. You probably got to beat John on on Wednesday and and, and build those RPI. Points. You know, and that's, uh, that's where we are, and that's what you've got in front of us, and we're looking forward to it. You heard Coach Henderson mention John on Wednesday. He means John Cohen, Mississippi State baseball coach. They are the SEC regular season champs. Just how close are Alabama and Kentucky? Look at these two by the numbers. Kentucky has one more win. Both are 15 and 15 in the SEC. Alabama's RPI is slightly better. UK has one more top 25 win than does the Tide. And the Cats, as I mentioned earlier, won the season series two games to one. That's a look at sports. Have a great day.